In a previous video, we set parameters like database name, username and password directly in the code. This is not a good approach, because when you come in the source code, you have also those values in it. There are various solutions to this problem, for example, loading a Lisp file with the config. A common approach in other languages is to store those values as environmental variables. Can we do this in Lisp? Yes, in this video we show how and we will also take advantage of the interactivity of Common Lisp. Interacting with the operating system is outside the scope of the Common Lisp standard, thus it's different in each implementation. The UIOP library is almost a standard and it provides a common interface to operating system functionalities across the most common implementation of Common Lisp. In particular, it provides access to environmental variables using getEnv. For example, I could print the value of the variable app name, and the result is nil because I've never set it. But let's store it in a file. and run it with sbcl, setting the app name as my app. We can see that the result is exactly the value of the environmental variable. But now the question may be, how can I set the value for the running environment when working in the REPL, for example, during development? One can easily do that with getemp and setf. In this case, I set the environmental variable app name to the name app set f. If I read again the value of app name, it's exactly the one that I provided. For sharing environmental variables configuration, it's common to write all the variables in a file named .env and then load them from the file directly. Libraries exist for most languages and also for common Lisp, we can easily find one. In this video we will use cl.env, which is symbol but well written. It's also interesting from a pedagogical point of view because it uses the condition system, so it's a way of looking at a simple real-world example. For the beginners, I also leave the link of a comment in which many choices are explained. For example, I was immediately surprised by the use of the Serapeum library. And in that comment, it is explaining why there is it. Let's start exploring the code. The main function that is exported is loadenv. The main function exported is loadenv, which is a simple wrapper around another function that maps an unstable to the actual environmental variables using a temp that we have seen before. More interesting is the redem function. This function reads the file line by line and every time it calls read entry which parses each line. Inside read entry there are a couple of cases in which the line is blank and in the end we can see that the line to be valid must contain an equal character. What is before the equal is the name and the rest is the value. If there is no equal, an error malformed entry is raised. In this case, the execution of the function stops and it returns to the caller. Read entry was called inside a restart case, so a skip entry option will be shown in the menu of the error. Let's try it. I create a file.env in the same directory as the one in which I started the interpreter, and I set app name as appenv. I load the cl.env library and call the loadenv function using the path.env passed to merge path names. This way it will complete the path using the default value which is the current directory. If I show the value of the app name, it is exactly appenv, which is the name I set in the .env. Now let's change the app name and remove the equals. And let's try to load the .env again. In this case, an error was thrown. The error is malformed entry and the value that I provided. And between the option, there is the skip entry, which is the one provided by the restart case. There is also another type of error, which is duplicated entry. It happens when we have multiple times the same name. 
In this case, the possibilities are two. Either skip entry, that keeps the old value, or overwrite entry to set the new value. This happens, for example, if I have upname equals to append and then upname equals to append2. If I reload the .env, we can see that we have a duplicated entry upname with two possible values. And I can choose either to skip the entry, in this case the old value was kept, that is the first one that is in the file, or if I do overwrite entry, it will use the last value. Inside our application, we could create a config.lisp file that contains an hash table config. We also define a condition if we had some error while reading the environmental variable value. In our case, we have two kind of values. Some string, like the database name, username and password, for which I impose the condition that they should not be empty. Then we have the host, which is hostname and port, and I can consider it as a URI. So I use the QURI library to read its value. There is a special case, because in general a URI starts with a protocol, and then there is hostname and port. In our case we have just hostname and port, so the user could pass something like this. In this case, the scheme would be filled instead of the host. So we manage this as a special case. If the host is nil, which means that it was not filled, I will put an HTTP in front of the value provided. This way, HTTP will become the scheme, while localhost is actually the host. Finally, we end with a function load config that loads all the variable name that we expect. From now on, we can use config instead of the actual values inside the store file. As usual, let me know in the comments if you liked the video, leave a like and subscribe.